can cruise through the marketplace, find me a G-Body. <laughs> I'm looking for a fixer-upper car as well. Maybe a Corvette. We'll see. Joe will kill me, though, if I get a Chevy. Chevy. Yeah. I'm trying to ride or die Ford. Wow. <laughs> it's all the same. why not? Dude, it's all the same. It's all the same. It has motors and tires and they brakes and things. It's not great. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to a, another episode of Tech Tuesday. My name is Ben. I'm Tim. And we will be jumping back into the wonderful realm of customer questions on YouTube and potentially Facebook today if we have time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Tim, is there any um, beginning of summer questions, quibbles, fashion statement tips, anything like that you want to give us before we get started? It's hot. <clears throat> Indeed. It's, stay, it's stay hydrated. Yep. That's what we're doing here. Oh, yeah. We got some of Your this. Your mug is way cooler than mine. Yeah. Right. Question one. Fast Fox 82. Got two X's in the name Fox. Just got my gold finish kit in. It was easy. It was as easy as putting in an aftermarket radio. I'm eventually going to run a 76 millimeter turbo, and it's got a three bar map, so this is an incredible kit. That's true. Um, yeah. We're making that, like, you know, we don't control the boost, but we do handle it. So if you got the boost, do a bit of scaling in the table, good to go. Yeah. Just got to make sure to get that fuel right. It's uh, There's a lot of people out there running boost on our stuff and uh, having a good time with it. Some people are having a bit of a fit, but it really comes down to tuning. Yeah. If you, you know, if you're having a first go at this and you're going to do a turbo up or a supercharger or something like that. You know, there's a few videos, a few people out there. Feel free to hit up uh, Facebook and all that because some people yes. might have dynamite advice or yeah. have the same build you have, and they already might have a, <laughs> a pretty decent tune sorted out. Yep. It's um, yeah, as we're starting to build more and more of a community, yeah. um, especially since you know we we probably market a lot about Royal Flush and and Boost just mm. from the CDI box. I just remember talking about it even on our last episode of Tech Tuesday. Um, you can do it with the kill shot. It. I, it, the ignition coil that comes with the kill shot provides plenty of spark power to handle boost. Um, though, you have the option of the Royal Flush, and I think we push that often because we are the only company that does that. Um, combining that CDI box it's into tricky. the ECU. It's not um, hard. But we're the only one. It's so, not hard and it's not easy yeah. all in the same time. Yes. We're just... We are super good with the maths <laughs> you are super good with the maths no 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 he's being humble but here um it's just to re-emphasize yeah um you made a great point plenty of people are running that kind of setup with a kill shot yeah. so if you have questions about it feel free to reach out to us feel re feel free to reach out to our um, forum on facebook um plenty of people running that kind of setup and we'd be more than happy to help you out if you run into anything and send us pictures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, pictures. Can't pictures calendar. <laughs> you got it, man. You 1990. Bad doggy. Bad doggy. Question is, just got my jackpot installed and running. Loving it. How do I access Love fuel it. level sensor? I'm not seeing the menus. It's not there yet. We have the wire for it. That's cool. But yep. the, the thing is, like we, we're still working out the strategy on it. We're just going to jump into one of the... Um, up and coming things. We'll, we'll announce when we're like, hey, now we have this fancy new fuel level thing. Yep. And I'll write up a document about the kind of the how to on it. So to kind of, we might post that as well as like mm -hmm. the update with a very applicable bit of information in there as well when it comes to how to set that up. Yep. We'll probably do a video here in the parking lot, normal stuff. Yep. But I'm excited. We're getting closer and closer to that. Um, I mean, we've talked about this for months and months and months. A while. So this is not anything new. It but just it, it takes is coming a lot. down the, the pipeline. It's it's a lot what? of programming involved in that. What? So on <laughs> our side, not the end user, the yes. our programming is super complicated. So it's an easy button for the end user. Correct. They just be like, I want to do this like this because of that, instead of them having to write their own roadmap into, you know, getting into the programming and algorithmic data and all that whatnot. It comes with that kind of nerd stuff, and not, I mean. Well, maybe I'm of a gener different generation, but not everybody's real strong on the, the coding as it goes. <clears throat> I try. 
yeah. in website coding, not software it, coding. It, weird, weirdly enough, it's it's all very similar. Once really? You, once you figure out the language, it's like trying to learn Spanish or Chinese or whatever, or German, <laughs> as we both ja. partially did. <laughs> yes. Ich spreche Deutsch, ein bisschen. Genau. Deutsch, ein bisschen. Du es das Sprichs Deutsch, mein... <laughs> That's that Tennessee accent. So I just want to take a moment um, just because take this five. week, this week, or not even this week, uh, last Thursday, we dropped our jackpot TBI system. Um, and I know we've dropped hints on this show mm-hmm. um, about the jackpot TBI system, things to look out for, stuff like that. Now it's here and we can talk about it. We've kind of themed it after that cool Mad Max um Fallout 4 type thing that's going on right now, uh, which I think is really cool. But um, aside plays, from that... Plays way too much Fortnite, so he's just keeping with no, whatever season I it's on. No, I do not. Hey, look. I do. Here we go. Here we go. So explain for the people, because we do this for the people, mm-hmm. what can people look to gain from, instead of going like a jackpot top-end kit, maybe they decide to go jackpot TBI why is this such a big deal for us? Well, the neat thing is a lot of people have been using our kill shot, which is fine. They've been using it with uh, like an MSD 6014 or whatever it is, maybe mm-hmm. 6015. I can't remember what it is. Right. MSD LS. Something. Something. 6LS. But here's the thing. Like, uh, great units. Don't get me wrong. Great unit. Works well with our stuff. It, it does its own time of control. We We wanted something with that TPI classic look that does the time of control, plugs in all in one kit at a reasonable price, for the people, because <laughs> whenever you spend X amount of dollars on our thing, and about the same money on somebody else's stuff, by the time you math all that up, you're like, ugh, that's a lot. Yeah. So <laughs> our stuff is going to be like throttle body, intake, harness, ECU, trans control. The works. <laughs> you get the works. And uh, the biggest differences is there's no injector rails. Yeah. There's no individual injectors. It's still good for 650 horsepower. And it cuts it down to one O2 sensor because of where the fuel is put in in mm-hmm. the engine. So it's not multi-port bank to bank situation. It's all out to plate. So, right. It's I like it. I got it on the test blazer here. It rips pretty hard. Yeah. Um, took a while to really get the fuel dialed in, but I mean that's that's just why that's why we test and stuff. Yeah. So very cool that we've you know launched the jackpot TBI. Uh, keep we'll continue to improve it, um, and uh, as we push towards. Hemi mm, stuff um, <laughs> down the pipeline. So uh, that's, yeah, that's like the next few months for me. Is <laughs> I'm sorry, I just finding obscure to, information. You always throw out all the fun stuff. I just decided to do it myself. Absolutely, it's the spirit, it's, man. I'm trying. I'm trying to. If you can't beat them, join them. That's right. All right. Um, oh no, we? we're not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> hey, yeah. If you watch Tech Tuesday, you you at least can be filled in on the new things to come that not maybe not everybody is aware of. So um, that's my opinion. I, that's that's the decision I've come to. Here we go. Question numero uh, trace. Now we're talking about different languages here. Um, Jose may kill me, but um, John M seven two six five. Can you help me find the video Tim talks about at the end cam sync versus no cam sync? Can't seem to find it. Thank you very much. Um, Isn't that a short? I believe it's a short. That's a short. I will do my best to find it, and you can locate it right here, and you can click on it. Um, right there? Right there. Right. Why do I always hit my microphone? We need to get lapel mics, bro. Yeah. Well, these things, if I'm talking here, it's fine. But this if is I'm cool. Right here, Pull. Do you like these mics, or do you like, or do you want lapel mics? Here we go. Pull. Let us know in the comments. Well, with this style of microphone, I mean, it just—I can still hear Shania Twain, and it smells no. like a Coors Light. What the heck? Don't throw me under the bus like that. I, we worked hard to get these microphones. Absolutely actually, did. Actually, um, I think a fellow—I forget his name off the top of my head—but we were recommended these mics from Jason Jarvey. Jason Jarvey. And Chavez, twenty-nine, twenty-three. Is there going to be a tuning software update with a wider map for more tunability? That's a future thing. We have to, we have to ask more of the processor and a bit more of the RAM on our PC boards mm. to cover that more resolution because it already operates so fast. We don't want to slow it down any because yeah. of 
everything from CAN data signal uh, resolution, all kinds of neat stuff. And we need that speed, honestly, to do all the insane amount of background math we do. That's uh, our learning table, as everyone knows, it's gotten to our tuning software, has amazing resolution. Mm -hmm. And then our basic fuel table is not as good. Still a tunable table. When you start getting into bigger boost, weirdly enough, to fill in some of the gaps, I've actually used a learning table to fill in some of the gaps in between, you know, when it has huge jumps from cell to cell and row to row or what have you not. I've actually used a learning table to uh, use that as a multiplier to fill in some of the weird stuff where Mm. it just kind of falls shorts on that. Nice. So I know it sounds weird, but hey, it worked just fine. I had no problems. Let's go with Chadrick Thompson having idle issues with wide open throttle. When the truck is at idle and I go to wide open throttle, mm-hmm. there's a train. It falls on its face. Sometimes I'm able to recover it. Others, uh, Other times it will die completely, sometimes shooting a flame out of the throttle body. The AFR seems to be okay while revving it up, but when I let off the pedal, it jumps to 30s, 40s, and then quickly returns to 13 to 14. Yeah. Um, any thoughts, suggestions, any help? Neat. So, obviously, you've done some st- work with your uh, acceleration correction versus TPS. Mm-hmm. Where it's going into lean, that's whenever you're coming up off the throttle, it goes into a different timing value and, and goes into like a follow, hidden follow value of deceleration fuel cutoff. So, it's going to go lean on decel. So, it's not banging out the tailpipe real hard. Mm-hmm. Whenever you run into it falling on the face Mm -hmm. and you've done too much with fuel correction on the the TPS um, acceleration correction versus TPS it may calculate fuel a bit too late to try to catch up with the engine if it does that it'll have a lean pop with too much fuel on top you get a little flame out the out the top end of it to help Mm -hmm. combat that I would suggest using your tuning software and manipulate the top end of your fuel table where it's happening the most and then also go into your acceleration correction versus ECT or map enrichment table as well and bring those values down a little bit more. That way you're not having too much fuel slightly too late to help your engine increase its velocity or something like that. Dude, I can't read that. Don't lie to me. No, I I really, I can't. Let me me read it. (laughs) <laughs> ah, there we go. It's almost focused. Oh my goodness! No, I don't have glasses, dude. I, I crushed them a while back. You want me to read it for you? Well, whenever I do with both eyes, everything's blurred. Uh, let's see. My car runs great, but on cold start, it seems like it just dumps fuel. And we can help explain turning cold start right away, so on and so forth. Yeah, there's, there's actually um during like the cranking fuel and, and map enrichment and all the other jazz there's this is Greg Comer by the way yeah so you can you can work with your um, parked air versus ECT add more air to it or you can figure out where the fuel modifier is by temperature which is generally under map enrichment you can go in there mm-hmm. and uh, knock that down a little bit in the colder areas so it's not so fuely on startup um, that'll, that'll probably help out a little bit just a couple little base parameters yeah, where can they find those sections in the advanced tuning software? Because right now they're icons on the side, um, like the injector is fuel, for example. Where would they go to find um, these tables that we're talking about? Because our advanced tuning software is free. One D. One D. Yeah, when you click on the fuel injector icon, there is like configuration one D and two D tables, mm-hmm. and then like X point. So 1D tables are going to have everything that's like a linear line graph type deal, like an acceleration correction or map enrichment or what have you. Not everything else, it's a you know like a speed density table, you know, uh, pressure versus velocity or what have you. Not mm-hmm. um, that's going to be a populated 3D table. So you kind of run into that situation. Sweet. Um, but also in one of the tech documents I wrote about acceleration correction, uh, not only did it did it in the handheld, but I also did it in the software too. So you can always just email us up, and somebody here will send you that. Oh, this is cool. Uh, that's, I watched that. It's not a bad video from uh, Mr. Jeremy Leach. Huh. So that's really awesome. Yeah, I like the I like the uh, streamer style of that thing. He really laid it out. He's good at talking Dude, too. Dude, that's that's sick. Shout out to Jeremy Leach, man. Keep it up, player. That was awesome. Okay, very cool. Dan Howard. It's an oldie, as far as the kind of question that is. It's only a day old, but it's a kind of question, but a goodie, because we come into this quite a bit. 
Uh, Dan Howard says, how do I fix this? Just installed Killshot this weekend and dropped the distributor in today. Got it running and was able to get, able to set timing. Then this happened when it shut off and tried to restart. I'll show it on the screen. It says, connect timeout. Killshot may be offline. Mm, interesting. Mm. Um, make sure your ECUs lighten up. Uh, if you have a tuning cable with it, plug it into your commu- uh, computer so if you can communicate with it. That's not a problem. If you can communicate with your between your laptop and your ECU, if your ECU is lighting up and all that jazz and the fuses are good and everything else, it actually just might be a failed CAN chip in the uh, on the circuit board of the handheld. Normally, what wipes those things out is like bad voltage. So yep. then you gotta you really want to look into where do you have your power, where do you have your switch twelve volt? Is it hooked to the alternator, starter, all that goofy stuff? Mm-hmm. But those things are a lot harder to break. Yes. Because it used to it used to be a thing where we'd see that a lot, and then we just redesigned the PC board and put in bigger, nastier chips and more filters and all that whatnot because people were doing a lot of really weird stuff with it. You know, you, yep. you test it up on a controlled environment like a car where you're making extremely good choices. Mm-hmm. That's fine, but not everybody's going to do that kind of install. Right. They're going to put in extra protections for every single wire. They're going to hook it up to a, a known source for them, but it may not be the best source of power. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. If you can communicate with the ECU, it powers up and does everything it should do, then that's not a massive deal. You can just get up with us, and I mean, you, we can help you out swapping that thing out, not biggie. Yeah. Unless it's like two or three years old or something, but that's a new graphic user interface, so that shouldn't be any kind of a problem getting that thing warrantied. Tim, thank you very much for joining me again for another episode of Tech Tuesday. Thanks for, for all of me. you guys. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Tech Tuesday. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions about ACES fuel injection or EFI in general, please leave a comment down below. If you um, have friends or family um, that are getting into EFI and uh, have questions as well, point in this direction. Share this video with them. Um, And, uh, yeah, like always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see all of you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye now. Thank you.